to start here? Well, uh, I, I'm thinking if we're recording and this is going out, then maybe we might start with sort of a just run through of, of what what these what what what, what incarnate is. Yep. Um, so so essentially, it's a a tactical turn based uh, battlefield game uh, inspired by you know well if you can we, we talked about that earlier it's kind of like chess but with eight thousand different pieces uh, and and three uh, D elevation and, and things like that. But essentially, the, um, the the point of the game is to build your warriors, which we call incarnates, um, and you build them with with three parts: a mind, a body, and a soul part. And once you you you, you start out the game and you have have several of these, so you sort of combine them together. Each of these parts has a certain ability that you use on the battlefield. So if you're looking at the uh, the one that's highlighted now, you have one called summons. You have the hazmat there, um, and essentially. The, the point of this, you, you, you put together your incarnate, and then you, you train them, you level them up, you, you play with them, uh, and you sort of get better and better parts, and then you know you get better and better incarnates. And then you also yeah. level them up with experience and things like that. I'll interject so that's really that when you're, yeah. yeah, when he's talking about the mind, body, and soul, so each, each uh, your mind, body, and soul, each one has, you know, these different sets of incarnates and different types that you can go through too. Mm -hmm. These are only yeah. ones that I've harvested so far, so there is tons, tons more. But you do yeah. make a choice on each one that you're going to slot in a position and what move you're going to essentially bring into the battlefield with you. Yeah, and so, and then just so sort of clarifying that as well, it's it's very that's that's sort of the the, the first stage sort of a customization of your your characters. There's a lot of them, and we can go into more more details about those as well. Uh, but but parts is the first level of it, and and. Those parts are organized in, in five different races that are sort of thematically related. So, for example, you have you, know, you have the judges, you have the Nizari, and you have the Void Watchers, and you have the Archons, the Titans, and each of those sort of have a, a specific behavior. The Titan is kind of a you know much you know damage dealer or, or you know um, big of Thor, right? Uh, big hammers and you know dealing damage. Um, whereas the Void Watcher is more about like summoning creatures and, and stuff like that on the battlefield. So, so, so you can combine these in any way that you want, as long as you have one by, brother, one mind, one body, and one soul. You can combine them any way you want. And each of these parts, as well, they are leveled, uh, so they have rarity on them. And obviously, the more rare the uh, the part are, the more powerful they are, and the less frequent they drop, at least in the initial levels. Uh, so, so the, the the point of that part system is basically just to you know, find the parts that create a build that has the abilities that you would like to use on the battlefield. So I think that's the uh, the first step of the uh, the customization of these. Now, there, there's far more, by the way. So so um, that's just the parts. Uh, in addition to the parts, you can also customize them further with with eternals and focuses. But we can talk about that more once we can sort of, I guess, get to see how the game uh, plays a bit. If you want to try to run away or something like that. These are my current. Uh, these are my current incarnates. Uh, I've only been leveling with three, but uh, yeah, these are my three guys. You choose your three when you're going in. This is just the last point I was at in the wave, so it'll kind of start me at the appropriate strength. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so this is the uh, the battlefield, and it's it's fully um, um, customizable. Uh, right now, all of the battle. I think all of the battlefields. I'm not sure if we started adding uh, sort of non-square battlefields yet, but all of the battlefields are very, very customizable, so you can have them in any shape or size you want them, really. And each of the spaces here can also move up and down, and they can have certain abilities attached to them. So you can have a lava uh, space that sort of, you know, if you go near it, you start burning, things like that. And and what when when you have these different heights on the, the battlefield, for example, you also gain uh, different advantages. <clears throat> it's a very tactical um, game in terms that in in the sense that you are. You use a lot of the things that make sense uh, in a battle actually make sense here as well. So when you're at a higher altitude, for example, than your targets, you get deal more damage. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're behind the target, uh, you actually also deal more damage than if you are like I'm a, standing. Like I'm about to do right, like I'm about to do right now, I'll receive bonus damage for being behind them. And here's the overly satisfying gain of change of level with the hammer strike. Whoa, bomb. Yay! <laughs> Now the entire level changes. So you have a bunch of these abilities that actually modify the uh, the effects uh, or, or modify the battlefield, and I can also add additional effects. And now you have an incarnate actually with an eternal. Uh, you see in the top left corner. Uh, the, the screen is still a bit blurry, by the way, so it's, it's probably hard for people to see the artwork. 
Um, but essentially, the, the top square in the top left corner right now uh, is an internal, which is, uh, you can kind of think of them as, as a bit like equipment uh, that you equip on, on these different parts. So, and again, these are, are just random examples I'm using, but let's say you have a uh, on your head, you can actually add additional, or well, the, the, the helmet would kind of be the equipment that you have there uh, on your head part. So your head has a certain ability, and your eternal uh, or your equipment uh, can actually modify and add additional effects to your your mind uh, part if you wish. So I don't actually see which one you have there because it's very blurry. So I don't actually see which in which eternal we have there. Um, yeah, I'm running the right now. I know from talking to Blue Bear that the subpoena is my bread and butter. Mm -hmm. so, uh, them here you, and choosing the way you face after a move is also very important too because a lot of your moves are very directionally based so choosing like which direction you're going to face even some attacks like it benefits me if i actually face away from them if i'm going to do an attack that you know hits backwards or something like that yeah yeah exactly yeah there's there's a lot of line of sight calculations and sort of things in front of you things behind you you know on your sides and in your reach and all of those things so it's a very sort of not not or ignoring all of the parts and, and all of the builds and things you can have just getting on the battlefield with, with any kind of build this is a very tactical game and you kind of need to understand the uh, the capabilities of your team uh, in order to best utilize them you, you have some people that are massive damage dealers you have support characters you have summoners you have like all of these different um, these, these, these different profiles that you create and, and then the, the actual on the field on, or on the battlefield tactics uh, become extremely, extremely important as well. Yeah, and something uh, something that Blue Bear had been saying when uh, he was observing yesterday was that learning how to kind of navigate the camera, um, I'm also in locked camera mode right now, so it's like um, learning how to kind of navigate the camera and position yourself is, is a big part of it too, because it can seem like slightly cumbersome at the beginning, kind of until you get used to it. But you also yeah. commented that you were getting rid of um, these wall areas and stuff was going to change uh, to kind of play out with that better, you were saying? Yeah, we're, we're refactoring, or we have already refactored how the entire battlefield work. Uh, and and <clears throat> basically the stuff that's around there is an artifact from, like this game has been in development for a very, very long time. We, we, I think that it's like five years or something when they, they first started building this. And, and there was a lot of assumptions made initially in order to, you know, how they wanted to, to, to have the game, and then those have changed in the meantime. So, so the skirt that you see on this ice map right now uh, is a is a relic from from, from older days. Uh, where we've changed that now and made it a lot more flexible, so we're going to create some really, really cool battlefield now, so now that we have the, the new system in place. Also, yeah, the map, uh, the, the map yep. used to be just squares. Now they can be whatever we want, and, they, and the, the skirt, you notice, is just like a, a big, like you said, a big square. Now it can just kind of go yep. along the edge at whatever height. Um, I haven't checked the locked up readiness of our room, your bathroom, so obviously please do that. Oh. Um. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> that was funny. Hey, Lumpy. Lumpy. <laughs> we are um, happy to learn. <laughs> yeah, so something else. Um, so about this in like this wave segment. So like I was in this corner fighting off these guys, and this is the only current uh, current game mode in the alpha that's available after the first campaign level. So once you compl like once you defeat your current wave, basically the wave spawns in a random location. So mm -hmm. they kind of all like I was up in this corner fighting these guys, and these guys all spawned behind me. So I kind of got to like re scramble into new positions now to make the yeah, best of my scenario, especially since all my guys are on low ground right now too. So I got to kind of make some. That is important to, uh, to to pay attention to. So so just to explain that as well, waves is sort of the, the reason why we wanted to have waves there and have that immediately is that it's sort of a almost like a sandbox, right? You you you, you play against uh, an endless amount of waves in in a round which consists of three waves. So you get rewards after each uh, round of, of three waves, and the rounds get uh, increasingly hard as you level up and as you beat the next one. Right? So there's no there's no limit to the wave. You can basically go to I I think. Um, Sham, I correct me on this, but I think during the um, the, uh, the uh, early alpha competition that we have, people lose like four or five hundred levels of, of or waste. Or I, I don't know what numbers, but 
They go it, really it, it hard. Like two, it was like 200 something, but we, we've, we've yeah, adjusted yeah. it now. I think that would be extremely difficult now with some of the uh, adjustments. Yeah, exactly. Oh, challenge accepted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's so, see it, man. That's awesome. Yeah. The point is that this is basically like a sandbox and it allows us to test a bunch of different things. When we're testing all of these new abilities and we're balancing things and things like that, it's very easy for us to sort of just jump into a battle and we have sort of all the things ready to set up. But you've already seen the um, the, uh, the the campaigns. Uh, the campaign is sort of made made in the same way that we're making these um, uh, the, the 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 waves level. Uh, and each campaign is sort of designed uniquely to to follow the story of of these incarnates and all the the yeah, well, I'm not going to go into the, uh, the the sort of the lore and the, the background stories of any of this. Uh, but that's that's another example of sort of how we we create those levels. Um, we're going to have a bunch of boss battles, uh, which again is a different form of, of playing. Uh, you can obviously replay all of these, <coughs> sorry, you can replay all of these uh, levels and, and boss battles and, and things like that. And we have a number of other game modes. Uh, I think the only one that we should talk a lot about is the, 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 the stronghold battle. Uh, we can talk about that a bit later. Uh, but there's like, this is just the, the, the one thing that we wanted to put in the game because it's very easy for people to sort of get into the battle really quick. You mm -hmm. hit the button, you pick your team, and you're fighting. Like there's no there's no understanding of game rules or anything like that. You just beat everything on the board and you're done. Um, but once we get to the other game modes, there's going to be a lot more stuff happening in that. But, um, yeah. I'll, I'll not pull the uh, can neither confirm or deny of the game modes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this, oh, this game again. <laughs> Yeah, but we, we've been playing around with a bunch of, of ideas as well, and chiefly for for uh, developers that are joining the project. We um, we we have sort of some some I, or some game ideas, game concepts that we uh, we put together just to sort of try to learn, and for everyone else as well to learn how the um, the the level system and the level designer and the programming and the the architecture of that works. Uh, so there's a bunch of different levels or game modes that we are playing with when we're sort of testing things. There are, where well, the rules are completely different from this. Uh, and then again, I'm not going to say that this um, and, and ends up in the, uh, the the final game. I, I don't think so. But we have, for example, one one game mode that we've been playing around, which is called Tag Team, uh, where you basically, rather than just choosing the three incarnates, you choose three, or you choose two teams of two uh, incarnates. And then you basically, uh, almost like a wrestling match, uh, you sort of fight against each other, but then you can tag out and, and basically put the other team while the other one is resting. So there's a there's sort of a strategy there in like resting your characters at the right point and making sure that they're healing and then, you know there's there's a lot more to it than, than just like running around the battlefield and beating up minions. Yeah, that's a super that's a super cool one. Uh the the concept of strongholds to me when you're explaining to that, like I've I've just always liked that kind of style yeah. of either mini game or matching. So that one was by far one of the most appealing to me for sure. So the stronghold mode, uh, as, uh, at least the way it, that it's been planned right now, and obviously all of these are, are, are you know, subject to change, uh, but the way that it's planned now is essentially that it's an asynchronous player versus player mode uh, where you design a stronghold, um, setting up you know the, the, the spaces and you pull out the level and you set up traps and you make you know, um, you know moats and whatever the hell you want to do on the battlefield and then. Based on that, you sort of get that this this configuration that you can either share with people or, or you know maybe even play it in the game. Not entirely decided yet, um, and and people basically go up against you. So so they get to try to beat you, beat your defenses, and see if they can best you. And, and you know, so so the the point of that is that it it, uh, it happens asynchronously. So so once you decide that level, you know you can send it out to people, you can share it by email or whatever uh, sharing mechanism we, we end up with. And then people can sort of try that, and then you can obviously improve on it uh, in order to see, uh, hey, you know what, this, this was weak against people that had, uh, and we don't actually have electricity, but this would be weak against someone who has electricity in their uh, their teams. So I need to, you know, change my stronghold in order to better defend against that, but also then needing to sacrifice something else because now maybe you don't have so much defense against higher. And again, none of these things actually exist, but just to to sort of explain sort of the the balance that you need to do when yeah, you're to, to keep it basic to keep it basic yeah, yeah. Hey, you'll so, want to mention with the, the strongholds that that the, the way that you'll be matched in pvp is um you know basically like your your elo think of it right how how well you've done in the past 
and then what's cool about it is that what you know at, let's say let's say this was you know a, a, a stronghold battle i finished the battle um we are we're working on a, on a process where you could where you could replay the the essentially the battle you can watch the battle and see like mm -hmm. what's going on what did my ai do what um you know what where are my defenses weak etc yeah, exactly. We, we can actually record all, all games if we want to, and obviously this is, um, you know, something that's optional, especially if you're playing, um, you know, just among friends. Uh, but we have the option of recording all, all moves that happen on the, uh, the battlefield, so we can replay them later. Um, similar to what you're doing with, like, all these other competitive games like StarCraft and whatever, you can basically just, like, you know, go back and see it. And then, obviously, you can see it uh, both or as, you know, an external observer or from your perspective, where you can follow the character, you can sort of do all of these things that you would no, no, normally do in, in, when you're replaying a battle game in a game. It's yeah. weird because the bottom left of your screen is like really clear and the top left and the top of it is very blurry. It's just the good old, good old uh, Discord screen Discord. time. We probably, yeah, we probably should have just done a Twitch to be honest, but oh, welcome, Jamie. Hey, guys. Hey, Jamie. Hey, every, everybody behave. Yeah, yes. Everybody stop. <laughs> Stop talking about what we were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the new Boreas, is it? Yeah. It went all blocky. Yeah, the mountains are the mountain like it got a little blocky. I don't know what happened. <laughs> this looks like an established game already, which is awesome. Oh yeah. Yeah, we had five years to try to make this awesome, and it's. Uh, I think we have gotten where we want to be at this point, and uh, looking forward to creating a lot of cool stuff that's going to be. Be happening moving forward. Boom. So if you go back to the uh, main menu now, we can talk more about yeah. the, uh, the rewards. So, so basically, um, we, we talked about the parts already. So you make an incarnate built up of three parts, and there's like 60, 70, 80 or something uh, parts that are either in the game or, or you know ready to release very soon. Uh, but in addition to that, sorry. He's, he's, oh, just yeah. he's awing in amazement. <laughs> okay, awesome. So that's just the first step of this. So if you go into the the hall, not the uh, the uh, porch. Uh, you'll actually see that this is sort of your roster of, of incarnates that you've built and you level them up and you do all of these cool things. So if you look on the right side of the screen now, you'll see that you have something called Eternals. And Eternals is a the next step, if you wish, of, of customization of your, your characters. So these uh, the, the simplest way to think about them, if you're not used to these terms, is that Eternals are more like equipment that you can put on these different parts that comprise your, your incarnate. So example, in, in this example, we have the Knight Rider Eternal, and these are earned, by the way, you, you find them when you're battling. Uh, so in this case, you can basically modify uh, this part by basically uh, this Knight Rider thing, and it says uh, whenever you teleport or something like that, uh, it'll put gain. That is something, and I didn't get to read the description. That's fine. Yeah. Um, whenever there. you teleport, <laughs> gain vanish for one turn. Exactly. So that's an additional ability that you add to your character. So, and then you also see on the, the, uh, on the top left now, you have the card that describes what you're doing. And also on the right, you see the back of the card. And the back of the card has two slots. Each of these patterns are unique per uh, eternal. And these slots allow you to add what we call focuses. And you can think of them as gems. They were actually called gems back in the old uh, Cold War days. Um, but basically they, in addition to adding new abilities to your parts, the focuses add additional stats or even other functionality or other abilities to your uh, eternals. So, so once once you find one of these slots, you need to find a matching focus that has the same shape and the same size as the um, the the eternal that you want to, or the eternal slot that you or focus mm -hmm. slot that you want to to add it to. So now you have the one that gives you a a uh, plus one speed bonus and a plus one affinity bonus. Uh, I think you're going to have to explain what the affinity bonus does in this particular case, Sham. I think it has to do with once you sort of get the, if you're, well, you, you can probably explain it better than I can, Sham. So, so your, your, your character's affinity, if you look, you see where it says pan in one eye, it's like a purple color. Yep. That's, that's his affinity. His affinity is death. And so anytime you put a death gem in, you'll get an affinity bonus for any, for any of the, of the focus, the focus so you put in. So that's why wow. the two gems I just put in, I got an affinity bonus on both of them. Yeah, so instead of one speed, you're getting two speed. Instead of one attack, you're getting two percent attack. Very nice. Awesome. So, so and, and for each of these Eternals, there's a different pattern on the, uh, the back of the card. Uh, so, and if you look at your C Council, for example, there, now you see that there's just one circle gem. 
uh, that is available. And obviously, again, you still need to match them. And this is a large uh, gem as well. So you have a bigger bonus on, on these ones. So you kind of need to decide, like, what, what are the things that are important to you on, on this particular return? For example, if you want to maximize your, your critical hits or you want to maximize your health bonus or speed or whatever else you want to do, you kind of need to find the, the focuses that give you those particular bonuses in this. I see you're noticing that you can't equip anything in this one. If you click the yeah, slot. No, I was I was just like clicking the I yeah I knew I didn't have any room for it I was just kind of like clicking around as you explained. Mm -hmm. One extra thing to note is that you see how it's a it's quality it's one star so you'll only ever be able to put one star nodes in that. Where, sorry, uh, where one, one star focuses I mean in that so like you can't put like a oh, super because, high quality because gem. The council itself is only one star. It's yeah it's it's too uh, it's too low quality for the oh, focus okay. to. Work on it. Okay. Obviously, the more powerful cards you, or more powerful eternals you get, the more powerful focuses you get. And the same thing with cards: the more powerful cards you are, the more eternals and better eternals you can equip as well. Uh, so, if you actually go back breath, to yeah, in that same breath, if we're talking about you know the sea council being too low, we can talk about how to upgrade these cards and how to dust out the other cards and stuff. Exactly. We can. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah you're, you're right. And again, the, the economy of that is, is still um, somewhat up for debate. Sorry? Is that Hall? That's correct? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You, you do all your customization of your existing builds in a Hall, and the Forge is where you create new builds, right? So so we, we imagine people having a, a huge number of different characters that they play with for different circumstances. So for example, again, for, for the the waves, it's fairly simple because you kind of just do the, uh, it, it's just, you know, more or less a sandbox. So you can use that to sort of try out different strategies and, and so forth. But when we're doing, for example, the uh, the strongholds, you you probably want to have uh, teams that are set up of of um, characters that are powerful against that particular stronghold. So, for example, if you have a stronghold that is is very powerful on on you know again fire, what's again these these things don't really exist as a concept. But um, if you have someone who's really powerful defending against fire, well, you don't want to send your fire team against them. You want to send your water team over. Similar with yeah, uh, with any kind of other game, you kind of want to have a a big roster of Eternals that you use in different situations. Uh, so when we're talking about the upgrade, if you look at the cards now under the name of the stats table, uh, you'll see that when some of them has like this these double uh, lieutenant stripes or whatever they're called, um, that basically signifies that this card can be upgraded. So if you click on the uh, send the button now on the uh, on one of those cards, uh, da -da -da. there you go. Now you're on the send button. So in the bottom right corner, first of all, you have the uh, the, uh, the the affinity and, and stuff on the bottom left. But on the bottom right now, you have three stars. So what you can do is you can you you're gonna get a bunch of these cards, and especially the uh, the lower end of the card. Now they're gonna be abundant, so you're gonna end up with a bunch of them. So so rather than just like leaving them around, you can actually consume them in order to boost a similar um, a, a similar part. So when on the left now, you consumed one part, and that actually added a new star uh, on this particular summon part. Now that is already equipped to your, your eternal. So once you build this out fully, you'll see that there are two eternal slots. One is open, and that's under the um, the, the circle. Uh, one that was open, and one that is locked still. Uh, so once you get the, the part fully uh, ascended to six stars, you unlock the second uh, eternal slot as well, which means that now you can actually have two uh, two eternal effects on on the um, on this particular part. And uh, by the way, all of these upgrades cost different currencies. Uh, so I think most of the upgrades cost uh, dust. And again, Sham is designing the, uh, the the economy of this, so we can probably go into more details about that. Um, but the, uh, you you consume these these resources that you sort of find in the game. So you have dust that you use just for for ascending, and I think upgrading some other things as well. Uh, and then you have shards, and you see the, the numbers up at the top left. You have 41,900, and it's a bit blurry, but you know, 41,000 something um, of, of dust. Uh, they're going to be consumed really fast, by the way. And then you have shards, uh, which I think you use to slot games. Again, Sham has the, um, the, the know how on all of the, uh, the different currencies or the, the resources that you get in the game. Yeah, if you want me to talk about that, I can, I can talk about it briefly. Yeah. Show, show you what that. Okay, so. So if you go to go pick another character that, that you have um, that can be ascended, yeah, and you can just click the little the little double arrows directly if you want to on on those slots. So you uh, see on the right hand right hand side, 
it's got the 30 over three. It's got that green um, looking little little fragment. It's called a fragment. Um, so there's already fragments. Assembled. Yeah, sorry, where is it? Already so assembled. Bottom, already, right, yeah, right yeah, above yeah, the, the threads, the threads or whatever they would be called. Yeah, yeah so, so, so those are fragments. Th those okay. are Those you can get by voiding parts. Um, so I'll show you where to do that in a second. On the right, like one right of that is a relic. And these are all class based, so those are they're green. So these are Void Watcher. That's a green relic. Right now, you get that from just playing in the waves. Later, you'll get it from bosses, and so that's it. So that's another option for um, for ascending. And then if you hit uh, cancel, whenever you um, whenever you put in an Eternal, that costs thread. So you're threading in the Eternal. Uh, you're binding it, and then. Yeah, so if you click on, let's say, the, the yeah, click on Jackal Tackle, I love that name, and you can see Equip, you see yeah. below it, it says that, that seven thread, that's how much it costs. Yeah. If you want to remove it, it costs dust, so that's kind of like, uh, make sure that you don't, you're not just, you know, you're not just putting them on, yeah. swapping them out. Um, yeah, it's yeah, relatively swapping cheap. them out every two seconds. Exactly. You should feel like you're, you know, you're building this concurrent, because what it represents is, is, a, is a, a recovered memory. That's, that's what these are supposed to be. Um, yeah, yeah. So, and then in the bottom right, they'll take you straight to the veil. I'll show you that in a second. So this is very, very uh, developer UI. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> go, yeah. So, so yeah, if you look at the eternal, so voiding means deleting from your account. So, so if you're going to do that, make sure that you don't really want these pieces. But if you were to void uh, eternals, you will get, um, you will get more dust. If you, or sorry, uh, you'll get. Yeah, dust. If you go to abilities, you'll get fragments. Um, and then if you go to focuses, I'm sorry, I, I misspoke. Eternals is thread. Abilities is fragments. Uh, focuses is dust. And then incarnates, you'll get like a combination of of um of, of basically your abilities. So yeah, so so, what I was to understand before, when you create an incarnate, if you wanted to edit it or change it, to my understanding, you have to basically to get that part back you have to void it essentially oh well, that's the last one no you don't you don't want to void them you want to reclaim them so hit cancel uh, okay. Okay. just before you go there can you just go back to the eternals uh for a second uh soldier yep. yeah now if you look at the the top two cards now they're actually the same card uh but you can see that their gems their focuses are also different so the bottom uh you saw, see all the holes on the bottom of the card those oh, are yeah. the focus slots that you have available and they're randomized. So, so even if these two cards are the same, uh, they they have they, they work the same way when you're playing with it. The uh, the, the the opportunities you have to sort of boost them uh, with these focuses changes per card. So even if you yeah. get two cards, so if yeah. you wanted if you wanted a card, for instance, with you know if I was looking for more triangles like on this one, then this one obviously has four triangles, whereas this one only has two, right? So if I exactly. want those triangle focuses, and you know this card is much better to me because it's got that many more triangle slots. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Fair enough. Fair enough. And, and, you, and you can see that here if you left click on Energy Cyclone, one of them, you should be able to see what the what the actual tree looks like. Um, this also then, has yeah, to be, from my understanding, this also has to be done in order too. You can't just cherry pick out your favorite slots. You'd have to do the circle, the triangle, so on and so forth, all the way down. Yep. Yes, sir. Exactly. Yes, sir. Okay, so then the last thing I guess, like you were saying, is the reclaimer. If you hit cancel, and then you click the word, oh, I'm sorry, oh. I'm, thinking, I'm saying cancel. Hit the X. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, it doesn't work. <laughs> hit, hit the hit, then hit reclaim. You don't want you don't want don't want to actually go through with this, but just hit the oh, reclaim okay, okay. word in the bottom right, oh, right and then this would bring all your parts back. It would unequip oh, okay. your eternals. And you pay X amount of dust, it, or you pay. Yeah. So I got to pay these these fees essentially to reclaim the skills that I used to build yep. it originally. And, and the Eternals. So we force you to take the Eternals out because it would be really confusing to, to have to deal with like a... Uh, uh, okay. just, well, just I mean, because. I think, even, <laughs> I think even in Diablo at one point you had to pull gems out of gear before you disenchanted. Exactly, way, exactly. Like, exactly. Like, yeah, that's like, a good way to think of it. Yeah. All right, sorry. I, 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 I want to make sure right that you guys understood that. Yeah. So yeah, so so the, the 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 I think the message here is basically that, that the the uh, the the opportunities you have to sort of customize and and build exactly the kind of characters that you're looking for that can beat exactly the kind of enemy you're up against is massively different. So so and and this has been a point for us all the time is that 
we we are very opposed to having this like oh yeah i have a you know i have thousand dollars i'm going to win this game by just buying all the cool stuff it doesn't really matter because even the most powerful characters uh have a counter right so so you you might end up with someone who's like oh yeah i, I have all the and again just to make that clear to everyone these are just example names if i have the most powerful lightning guy on the planet that's awesome but what if i you know have a really weak water guy and i can spew water on your electricity and suddenly you short short circuits right so so all of these things are are balanced against each other so that there's there's always going to be a counter to to you know any kind of strategy that's there well, i think part and of even, uh... oh, sorry go on go on yeah and even with all of the parts even if you have like two superhero characters you still and that's just building up the characters themselves the skill actually comes for from how you use them on the battlefield right so so even if you're up against someone who has more powerful parts than you are if you are a better strategist than they are if you understand how to use your team better you can easily go up against a noob that has a lot more powerful parts than you and still beat them so so that's kind of how the the, the balancing of, of making sure people don't have pay to win um in this case, yeah. I think a, a very uh, very cool concept you brought up to me was too is that you know if uh, when the community gets known and stuff like that and there's like uh, well like PvP happening and stuff happening before when you get to choose kind of your Eternals before or your Incarnates before you go in, then um, you know people who are well known players or something like when me and Mukti as an example that you know say. <laughs> You know, Mukti has X cards, and this is these are his hard hitters. That's what he uses. Then you can very much build to counter him on the way into the match. Um, exactly. Of course, I then brought up the concept. I'm like, yeah, but then what if he knows what I usually use, and he counters me also? Yeah. Then we just meet on the battlefield with a handful <laughs> of nonsense. But you know, I'm like that, no, that, that counter that countering concept is always going to exist, which, like you said, is very very strong and. Pre preventing any one person just from buying, you know, getting a really nice NFT and, and conquering the battlefield. Yeah, exactly. And then I, I think that, and, and, and I kind of also use the, the analogy of, of, of like football or soccer or something like that. Like if you take a kid off the street and you put him up against Maradona, well, he's going to win. Maradona is going to win. Right? Or if you put a, a high school student up against Tom Brady, you're probably going to get wrecked by, by Tom Brady. But uh, but you you can sort of, when, when you're putting it together, you're football, soccer team you sort of find the, the players that that matches what you're supposed to do and you pick your formations and you do all of these different things and but the, the game itself even during the game can also change right so so especially if you have things like the tag team uh, idea that we've been playing around with well basically now you're swapping in and out teams so even if you know which four players that Mokti is going to bring to the battlefield you don't know how he's going to apply that in that particular situation right so so there's like all even and uh, the, the point of this is basically saying that even if you have gotten your parts and your eternals and your focuses to exactly where you want them, still no guarantee that you're going to win the game because there's so much tactics also on the battlefield after you've actually put your players there. I also just realized that I can customize the visual based on what thing I chose. Like, I just realized I could give them the judge wings, but switch out for this. I'm like, oh, I'm so hyped for this. Yes. And actually, you'll, you'll notice that right now, um, the, so we're adding a feature, basically, at Epic Rarity. They'll have kind of like a, like kind of a little extra, even a little extra um, customization or a little extra makeover. They'll look a little bit cooler. And at Legendary, it's literally going to be a straight up different part. Um, that's in the works. It's not. It's not what you're seeing right now. But uh, yeah. so the, the legendary guys will feel like feel crazy. legendary. Right. Right. Feel super like. I mean, they, they already do look cool. Like when when you start getting legendary pieces, the mm -hmm. we did it on purpose to make the colors look really awesome. But yeah, oh, I guess I guess I, I, I really liked. Uh, I'm like I brought up Diablo before, but I really like the, the whole concept of giving my character some like uh, you know some archangel or some robotic wings. So like uh, I found it really cool. I was like, oh wait, I can grab the void orb with the wings. I'm like, oh give give him the long <laughs> give him the long super saiyan hair. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Cool. And I guess that was one of the things that I didn't want to comment on yesterday about uh, additional models and, and stuff. And it was uh, not 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 confirming or denying that we're gonna do some stuff. The, uh, the visuals as well, but uh, I guess Sham just spilled the beans yeah. for uh, doing some stuff yeah. on the well, maybe, he just, maybe he just forgot to say not confirming or denying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's no, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the key. And, yeah, 
and hell hades has already talked about female models coming as well so so yeah there's there's the, the visual stuff of this again uh, is, is, is um is in progress and then we're gonna expand them and add a lot more stuff to this and you're by even the scene that you're looking at now by the way it's just one scene each of the the different races has their own sort of stage where they're they're configured as well uh, so yeah there's there's a lot of stuff where we're working on still really like this anubis looking head too it's uh yeah i'm like i really like the models i'm like the fact that they're also being reworked is gonna be uh gonna be super oh cool. yeah i i am blown away by this guys seriously this looks like an incredible game i'm super super excited about this yeah well, Thanks so much, well it was like when I asked it, uh, Bjorn yesterday if uh, the intention was always blockchain with it to begin with, and you know when he chuckled and was like, "Well, you know, blockchain gaming wasn't a thing when we started, so <laughs> <laughs> it definitely wasn't because that wasn't real." I don't think Ethereum even existed when we started. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been a little, you know, for a while. Who? Yeah, exactly. No, <laughs> yeah. We, we, we. The, the development process has has been uh, well, obviously it's it's, it's picking up uh, a lot right now, but it's it's been going on for a very long time, and and we've reworked a lot of things now to to sort of go into this production stage that we are now. Uh, I, I think one of the reasons why we're comfortable with launching and then sort of announcing and then bringing more people on board is that we have the, the the platform and the architecture that we have behind this now allows us to do production and ramp up production really fast. So, for example, new abilities now is literally like five or ten lines of code. Uh, and the same thing with the battlefield. We can write battlefield uh, or, or levels now that are, are, you know, 15, 20 lines of code that explains the rules of a particular level. And those are very easy to produce and stuff. Uh, so, so now that we have this, we're sort of at the stage now where you can run for production and, and sort of starting to, to sort of see all the things that we want to have when we're going public with the first uh, sort of full release um, at some point. Um, comes on any dates or anything like that but we, we, we sort of have that thing in that goal in, in place now and we know that we have all the technology we need in order to get all of that done um, so that's why we're, we're comfortable going public now and starting to show this off um, I know you don't want to get too far ahead into uh, you know you said before you didn't want to get too far ahead into uh, features to come and stuff like that but since we got it on the screen right here and it's already <laughs> in our faces is there much you could tell us about the guilds concept I can't, and I don't want to, and then it's not because we don't <laughs> have it. I mean, I mean it, it's, it's not actually because there's, there's that much to hide, is that because we are in the stage right now where we are planning that feature out and how, how we want to make the entire sort of community aspect of, of uh, Incarnate happen. Uh, so we have a bunch of ideas around it, and I can... Uh, I, okay, I, fine, I don't like to hide. We have a lot of cool ideas about it. Uh, I'm not going to say, oh, it's going to blow your mind. It's going to, you know, uh, what was it? The, the Green World people were saying, the last game you'll ever play. Um, I'm not going to like do that. You'll ever yeah. need. Yeah. <laughs> I did watch we, we have a lot of cool ideas. stuff, Bjorn. It's yeah, fantastic. Sorry, sorry for getting into that. I guess the long and the short that we can say about, about the guild stuff is that we're super focused on the community thing. I'm, 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 I play a lot of I play a lot of games. I play games like basically all my life at this point, and that's what I play games for is for the community. So, guilds will be a big part of will be a big part of uh, what what we do with it. Um, what the specifics yeah. of it are is like like Bjorn said. We have a lot of really cool ideas. We need to lock them down before we before we announce it and be like, oh, actually, we have to back off from that's not exactly what we, it's. We want to make sure that it's that it's just right for you guys. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But either way, the fact that it's announced, the fact that it's on there, the fact you know, we d details aside, the fact that it's most definitely going to be a concept is is super cool. Yeah, the guild yeah. thing is is awesome. I love that. In in before Vulcan vs. guild, okay. Like, so. I I have no idea what their their timeline is, uh, but I can tell you that there is a planned at least launch date for for incarnate, and and we will have those things in in place at least in the majority of it uh, in place before that launch date. <clears throat> so, so I, I again, I'm not gonna like go into too details about it. Only that it, it, there's a lot of ideas going around, and that is really important to us. Um, what I can say though is that that part of it is something that I'm gonna say this without revealing it. This is something. It's a layer on top of everything else that we've seen so far. Right. So, so it's it's not like oh yeah, guilds is you know just another waves level uh, it's not just another set of incarnates or something like that it's a level that's on top of everything that we've seen so far 
So when we're talking about like, hey, you know what, here's here's the battlefield, here's the character building, there's a new thing there that's going to be on top of everything else that we're, we're planning for the build scene. We, so, so we didn't touch much on campaigns because I know only the first uh, only the first mission was open, but there is a fairly in-depth concept for the campaigns coming. You mentioned that the Shadow, Shadow Lion Gate is going to essentially be a boss fight, more or less, right? And like, yeah, so, so so the idea here, and this is kind of a tribute to, to, to sort of the developers that are on this, this game right now, um, the, the, the levels here now are fairly easy to, to, to implement for, for developers. And uh, so, so we were, I think we have all of the Tetris levels sort of on development uh, branches right now uh, that are done. And this release that you had the first one on, or the first level on, uh, was made on Thursday, Friday, something like that. Um, well, actually, it was a week ago. Yeah, we had a small pickup on the Mac thing. Uh, but essentially, all of these levels now are very, very easy for, for the developers to produce, and they're brilliant. They're really, really smart. They, they get all of this stuff, and they, they can create these these um, mm -hmm. these levels really quickly. So the campaign sort of it, it tells a story about the uh, the incarnates, and there's some some dialogues in here, and you're more than welcome to read it. I don't want to go too much into the uh, the details because that might spoil. Uh, you know, the story part of, of Incarnate for, for people. But yeah, uh, the, the, the thing here is that um, you, you play through the levels uh, or the, the, the campaign levels, um, and at the end of each area, if you wish, uh, there is a boss battle. I think it's on every, I, I don't exactly know exactly what the, the level design okay. is right now, but at the end of each area, you have a different boss battle. And the boss battles we have uh, set up right now and that we're, that are in development are unique bosses. So it's not just, oh yeah, now you have, uh, again, example name. There's no character called Thor in the game. But let's say that one of the bosses you fight is Thor. We're not just gonna have like, oh yeah, it's now a more powerful Thor. It's completely different game mode uh, when you're fighting Thor as when you're fighting you know, Athena. Again, no character called Athena in the game. But the, the, that's actually a completely different game mode that you're playing against these different bosses. So I think the boss yeah. fights are gonna be really, really, really cool as well because now you get to go up against like all of the power that we can muster in coming up with creative ways of defeating you, right? And you need to counter that. You need to pick the, the actual team that's going to be able to, to defeat that particular boss. And it's not just, oh yeah, now I have the perfect team, so I'm going to beat all the bosses and just level them up. No, there's going to be very, very different strategies for every single boss. So you actually need to learn how to utilize all of these different abilities. In the, the, most the, way, the way we were kind of describing it was like, uh, it's like a World of Warcraft esque boss in the turn based, in, in this turn based, you know, framework. Yeah, that it will have like uh, some sort of mechanic to it and will require a certain X amount of strategy. You know, maybe right. it lowers That's elevation, awesome. heightens elevation, stuff like that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, and again, that's that's one of the beauty of, of, of this game now is that we, we can actually very easily come up with these different uh, different ideas, and we have some very very creative writers. Uh, I'm not going to say that he's here right now and and designing these levels and doing an amazing job at that because that will just go to his head. Uh, but if we had such a person here, uh, they have done some amazing work on being creative on these uh, these levels and these bosses. I really look forward to showing that off as well. I wasn't talking about you, Shan. Just, I know. Just, it looks like just, your head. <laughs> just the like the amount of theory crafting and different layers of strategy with all the characters, all the upgrades. Like it's just there's going to be so much depth to this, so much going on. It's like I could easily see myself sinking hours and hours into just like figuring out one fight. Yeah, and, just and how the, to best counter people. Just the trial and error, yeah, like you said, just the trial and error of trying to figure out what the best combo for who you're facing, whether it's uh, whether it's a boss or whether it's you know whether it's an actual human that you keep running into that you're like, okay, I need to figure out what this guy's weakness is. Yeah, I mean the, the, boss, the boss fights, <laughs> the boss fights in PVE seems like it'll be incredibly interesting. Like the best way to beat uh, you know, like a pre-made, uh, similar to World of Warcraft. Uh, thing you were talking about, but yeah. you know it's just single player, of course, and you're controlling all the pieces rather than this one individual character. But then also the PvP element and facing off against other people, sort of in in like a chess match, but with way more layers of strategy going on and all these other elements. Uh, yeah. Seriously, guys, like wow, and 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 just uh, it was. I'm sure I'm not alone with this, Bjorn, by by saying it's such a pleasant surprise finding out that you are one of the lead developers uh, for this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's 
Yeah, that, or, was or my, you... that, that was my waking up on Saturday. I got a message from Bjorn on my phone, and uh, it's like, uh, "You want to? Uh, you want a tour of this new game?" And I'm like, "I've had five seconds <laughs> to look at the trailer. Yes, I would like a tour of this new game. Let me get the coffee machine cooking here." Yeah, we exactly. we all, yeah, all, all okay. Forge guys are so excited about this. At least I know, like from the people I've talked to, uh, Bjorn and, and Sham. Uh, a lot of guys are very, very excited that you guys are onboarding with Walking Forge. Uh, super, yeah, super, yeah. super, super pumped. Yeah, we're very excited to be on board as well because we, we I've, I've always worked with the community through through Dragon Garden, and, and just so everyone is aware, I'm just one developer here there. So it's just a full team that's doing all the hard work and, and coming up with things, all the production and all the art. Like I said, I, I can't draw a straight line. So so all the the visuals and all the cool effects I see, that's how I do. I I don't want to take credit for anything. Uh, just that you know we we worked really hard on this, and it's it's really really cool to be able to show this now, and especially seeing how you are playing these games right now and what builds you are and sort of learning about these capabilities. That to us is just like, it's mind blowing to see this actually having the reception that it gets from, from all the communities. Oh, oh, you can, I am you can see. wielding a bow and a sword right now, guys. I don't know if you guys can yeah. see this right now, but I'm pretty, <laughs> I'm, you I'm, can, I'm pretty hyped about this. You can, see, you can see the level of work that has gone into this. I mean, oh, like, yeah. there, is, there is no denying. Plus, it looks it. fantastic. Mukti, I feel so sorry for you. You're not going to get a shred of sunlight. All he needs is a bigger window installed in his house, yeah, and he'll be enough. fine. Like, I don't know, I don't know oh. what the stress is, guys. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. There's just so many great games that are going to be here now. I'm never going to want to be doing anything else than <laughs> just uh, them playing these. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, so there, there's there's a lot of cool things coming here, and again, we've only shown you the, the basically the surface of all of the cool things that we are are planning. We haven't, like I said, shown you any boss battles. We haven't even talked about the guilds or anything else. And I have not confirmed or denied anything that we're <laughs> details about the uh, the NFT space or anything like that. But there's there, there's a lot of really really cool things that we have on the plate uh, that we're we're uh, moving forward uh, with right now. So we yeah, really really appreciate the reception we got. From that being said, uh, this alpha is open to everybody. You can go over to their Discord, claim your name, and uh, yeah. jump in yourself. I'm like, it is fully accessible. Yep. Could you just go in the their Discord in, uh, in the Incarnate Falcon Forge one? Oh, it looks like there's already pinned, I think. Yeah, it's pinned. I think it's pinned. Perfect. I'm going right now. So, so this is not a, uh, and we want to be very clear about that. This is not like a one Skydream that's like, oh, yeah, this is going to come in the future. No, you can download and play this right now. Like you literally go right now and, and get the access. You can start playing this game uh, and and learning things. One thing I would like to point out to everyone is that we're still calling this an alpha. Uh, we actually call the one in December alpha as well, but we're calling this an alpha. You are likely to run into bugs. You are likely to lose your builds. You are going to get wiped before we do a full release. But this is fully playable right now, and you know, let's go go and play. In fairness, that's just like anything, though. I don't think anybody's playing, uh, you know, Forged Arena in Alpha upset that stats are going to get wiped come get wiped come full release, right? You know, it's... Exactly. yeah. I mean, it's like a, it's a privilege to be able to kind of participate in kind of this stage of a game, and oh, yeah. especially if you can provide feedback if something goes wrong, and you know, it's yeah. I mean, yeah, it's but somebody that doesn't understand that. I mean, come on, it's just how yeah, awesome yeah. to be a part of it. Yep, yeah, and, and and just based on, on what you, you players are, are showing us right now, we have a bunch of new ideas on, on how we can tweak things. And we obviously see bugs that, you know, who's not here right now? Graham, I don't think Graham is here. Uh, that Graham is responsible for. Um, so Damn it, Graham. Hmm? <laughs> Damn it, Graham. <laughs> um, uh, every yeah, time. Yeah, every time it's there. Uh, and also, so all of these things are, are really, really cool for us to see. And when there's bugs, obviously, we'll, we'll, we'll add those to the list and we'll, we'll figure those out. I think actually, and I'm not joking now, I think actually Graham is already working on the um, the, the frozen uh, minion thing. Um, so so the, yeah, having this exposure to you as well makes the game a lot better uh, for us, especially because it's, you know, we, we, we have so much to show you already. And then you can start planning out strategies, you can learn things. Obviously, we're not going to come around and say, oh, yeah, this is actually... You know, this is actually just going to be a Tetris clone and release. You, you learn sort of how the, these things are, 
you learn about the different races, you learn about their strengths and weaknesses, you learn how to capture different things. So even though, you know, um, this one, you know, or any of these, these abilities might change in values or, or something like that, you still learn sort of how the, um, the game works and you learn the strategies that are important to you in the game later. So right, right there, I just forged this incarnate. I was originally just doing him because it looked cool and it was something to do while Bjorn was talking, but I'm like, oh my God, I like the look of him. He's getting forged. Exactly. And now you see you're in a different uh, stage as well because now you're, you're chosen, chosen different parts and now you're actually, you know, playing on a different, or you're on a different stage where you're seeing him rather than the, uh, the previous one that you had. So, yeah. And, and a little, little shout out to our uh, our our community actually. Uh, Blueberries here, um, Arctic and and uh, Animo. Those those guys. Little, like if you have any questions, those guys have played quite a bit of this game, uh, yep. and are, are, yeah, are really good about answering. Bluebear, yeah, Blueberry was in here yesterday giving uh, giving us some pointers and stuff on uh, a lot of things. He was very very helpful. He's got a YouTube right. channel, so he's putting up a lot of uh, right. well, content right. already just on on the alpha stuff. So. I can help too if people want to check it out. Yep, yep, definitely. Oh yeah, there's a lot to go over. There's a ton of strategy, but there's like you know we're we're here. This is only alpha stage. A lot of the modes are still locked. You know, PVP, PVP to come, guilds to come. What's this? Uh, strongholds to come. What's this one? Is we get we get a we get any information about what IGA is or A I G A. I don't know if it's an acronym. Uh, it it is. I, I, I'll give you. I'll give you guys the most I can give away, which is it's it's for Dia's uh, universe. So if you you don't know who Berdia is, or maybe you do. It's, it's one of the create. It's one of the other creators' universes. You don't um, want to spoil the uh, spoil the story or anything like that. But it's. Uh, yeah. I, I can't give away too much. That that would that would be that would be uh, story spoilers. I think wouldn't be fun. Yeah, that's, that's fair. No, just just asking because I saw it on the menu here. Yeah, we put there to have people ask questions, so it's, it's all good, man. Yeah, it's no, this, the, uh, was, this was this was super insightful. It was like super awesome to have Bjorn here. I'm super super hyped that you do joined too, Sham. I'm like it made for a, a good walk through everything and stuff like that. Everybody's definitely got a got a really nice insight on what's going on. Everybody can go over to their Discord, download the alpha, and kind of test it out themselves. Because I mean, I haven't played it a ton just because I've been a little busy. But, uh, I mean, been a little busy. It only got announced two days ago. It's just been a busy two <laughs> days. But, um, but you know, like, there's, it, it's there. Everybody can play it now. Everybody can try it out. Um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's super cool just to kind of, you know, try it all out, see how it's all going and stuff like that. It's, it's awesome. Um, Blue, Blue Bear, could you drop your, your links into the Incarnate channel here? Yeah, that, yeah, that'd be sure. awesome. Yeah, so, very, uh, yeah, he's got a he's got a ton of playthroughs and you know he's yeah, got I, can get of, I, I checked I out his channel it. yesterday. He's got a ton of them. Yeah, awesome. so I, all all right now the the primary focus is um kind kind of going through the basics, right? You know, what are affinities? What are eternals? What are parts? And like going through all of the parts. What are eternals? Um, if you guys have any like any requests of stuff that you want to see from the alpha, you know, let me know and I'll try to create a video on it and stuff like that. So the next series is going to go through all the Eternals and what they do. So uh, that should be over the next couple of weeks. Awesome. That's going to be a huge. Uh... Sorry, go on. Yes, one one video request. Uh, how do I win the game? Yeah. <laughs> right now, right now, the way I'm finding like just super easy to go through the waves is build like a bunch of burn uh, burn characters yeah, and pull characters and just. That. So yeah. when you comment about burn, is like a is a bleed card very similar to the burn concept? Uh, yeah. So the bleed the bleed only uh, bleeds if the incarnate moves or if they attack you. The burn happens no matter what at the start of the turn, and the burn stacks as well, so it can stack up to ten. So if you have ten burns on there, you can actually go up to like fifty percent damage and at the start of the incarnate's turn, and it yeah, after, does, it doesn't matter about your attack. Yeah, after you commented on that, I started. You would comment that I was like not really using the uh, the raise. The raise I think it was. Yeah. yeah. So after that, I started like I used it a couple throughout this video. I used it a couple turns, and I was like, oh, everybody's just roasted now. I'm like, that dude just yep. died because he was walking. Like seriously, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm I'm on like wave sixty right now, just playing around right now, like literally right now, and I've got like three incarnates grouped up with ten burns each, and they're just dying. Yeah. No, it's, I'm. Uh... There's so much strategy and so much level to it. It's just, it's just wild. 
And I'm thinking Sham is silent right now because he's basically redesigning that function right now. So. Damn it, Sham. <laughs> he's just nerfing oh, burn. Thing, it's seriously, you know? it's it's so OP because it just bounces between the incarnates, so it never drops off. Hell no, yeah, it, it's, it the, the spreading is a little more aggressive than I think we want, but I'm leaving yeah. it in uh, for for you guys for now. So you guys can good, quickly. Good. Uh -huh. Man, that was going to be like my win mode to go. You know, want to start the game. <laughs> Burn everything. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, probably going to balance these. Out. But that's the that's the point of all these these chemical things. So 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 there there's going to be a, a counter to that, or maybe Burn gets nerfed. I don't know. But all of these things are are going to be balanced, and and you playing the game now and showing us all of these different strategies that you're developing, we're going to nerf all of them. But you're not going to be able to do anything. Mm -hmm. You're going to keep the information away from us, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah. I, I've, I've beta tested the game for Bjorn before. Anytime I get too fast, he slows me down. It happens. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so if, if we want to hop into Alpha, I'm on. I'm in Discord right now. Is there uh, is there like a download link anywhere in there? Uh, in the, we, need uh, the, uh, we need to set you up with permissions first. So let me check. What's your name? Okay. Uh, Mukti. Mukti, yeah. Let me uh, check your permissions, and I'll get you set up. Awesome, thank you, man. Yeah, I'm gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna play around tonight, and this looks very, very fun. Get my feet wet, get started. I'm definitely gonna check out some of your videos as well, Blue Bear. Well, it definitely uh, helps too. There's just yeah, so many. That. There's just so many, so many like cards and stuff to go through on what you're putting on yeah. your incarnates. Like it looks like just... a lot to take in at, at it, once when you're first starting. Well, because not only on which ones you're going to use, but just the knowledge of what your enemy is going to be using against you. You know, it, it, there's going to be so much like trial and error kind of feeling things out and figuring out what's the best for you. Yeah. And even then, I'm like, even when you find out what the best for you is, it's like we said, it's like everybody's going to be like, oh, yeah, he uses he uses these cards. I'm building against that. Like, Yeah, that's mm -hmm. when the mental games start, man. That's yeah. that's like the most poker you know, face, those are the most fun face. type of games. Man. Yeah, I am really, really hyped for this. Mufti, you're a poker player. You know maths, right? So we're trying to figure out how many combinations there actually are. So we know that he's like, from... Use your brain. <laughs> use, you, have a, you have a brain. Can we borrow it for a second? Uh, we, we realized that on the parts that are, are in the game already and with the uh, parts that we are going to announce shortly, uh, there's roughly 15,000 different combinations. But we have, for each of those parts, we have two Eternals, and there's about 60 Eternals. Can you figure out somehow how many combinations that is? It's, it's, I mean, it's actually more complex than that, because there's a, there's a, there's a stack called EP. It, 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 it's, it's with a, there's a stack called EP, so you couldn't have every combination, and then some of the cards are class-locked. So that, so it's more complex than just a, so yes, but it's still the point is that it's a ridiculous number. It has an, it has an e in it. It's a number that has an yeah, e. In there, it. it had an e in it. He did. <laughs> he did. He did the equation on stream for me on the calculator, and I'm like, Bjorn, the answer is an equation on its own. Like, can you just <laughs> like five billion? Give me, give me a, just give me an outrageous number. Don't make me do math to figure out math. Like, yeah. what? That's yeah. insane. Big. The, the point is that right. there's so many combinations here that you're always going to find something that, that fits into exactly what you, you want to do, and you're always going to find well, something that comes at you. In, in my mind, it means you can always be beat. Yeah. It, yeah. No matter how good you are, how strong you are, how ready you are, you can always be beat if that person knows and comes. And that's before we even start talking about battlefield tactics, right? So, so even if you have all the cool parts, you still need to actually beat them on the battlefield. And it doesn't matter if you have all the cool equipment if you don't know how to use it. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's it. It's like I'm just playing with, uh, you know, some basic moves and stuff from what I farmed up. I make my total playtime. I mean, Bjorn, you've been present for all my playtime so far, right? I haven't played yeah. at any time, like, outside of streams with you. So it's like, you know, I only have, like, my cards here. Plus the handful I've already forged and stuff. Like I only have so many cards, you can only see so many of the combos. But there's there's uh -huh. just so much. There's just so much. It's there's gonna be a lot of a lot of figuring it out, a lot of getting it right. It's a big game, definitely a big game, and that's that's uh, one of the things we're we're very proud of as well. To to have like it's it's still manageable. Like you can you can still get to a game and you can start playing and you can learn and you can sort of grow better. Uh, but there's it's like chess. We we talked about that a lot. Like it takes 15 minutes to learn, and it takes a lifetime to master. Right? So so that 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 balance there is really really important.
even this character selection screen, to be honest, it feels like this. This feels like a World of Warcraft like selection menu where I'm oh. customizing my hero. It looks like, amazing. It. Like the, yeah. the aesthetics of it are just incredible. The animations yep. are just so good. Yeah, and the uh, the uh, the backgrounds and everything is made by the same artist that does the uh, the dragons for uh, Dragon Garden Sword. Oh, very oh. nice. Awesome. Very cool. Little little uh. Well, bonus facts: All the animations are actually um, Dane. Well, the the lead artist Dane and I, we had to do the do all the animations on video for our, for the animators. <laughs> what do you so, mean? Like, you you would do them yourself. We would do them, take a video, and send it to them. Oh, jeez. So, so like like the uh, the the kick flip. That's that's uh that's me back flipping. Wow, <laughs> that's so that's cool. awesome. Well. <laughs> I just, I just have to say, because it was such a pain to do to do it, I want someone to know. <laughs> did, you have, like, did you do like the sensors thing, or did you just film a video and then kind of recreate it from overlapping with the video? So, right. So, so we, we basically explained to them, we're like, okay, we want it to look like this, and they were like, oh, can you do a video? We're like, okay. Um, <laughs> so, have, like, just go in your sensors. front yard and do a backflip, like do it with a camera. What are you doing? <laughs> I was like, all right, Dane, you do you do these animations, I'll do these animations. And we just took a bunch of videos and you know, they, they, they did awesome. a great job. Yeah. Well that's awesome. I'm like I'm a part of a project called Geocats and uh they've been doing a lot of their audio in a very unnatural way as well, going out in nature to film footsteps and creek sounds and like tree falls and stuff like that. It's you know, those are those organic pieces that make it more unique or, or make make a project so much more like have so much more depth. Yeah. And a lot more yeah, I agree. Awesome stuff. Did you have any more things you wanted to show, Walter? Um, I mean, if there was something specifically you wanted me to go over, have a look at. But I mean, aside from that, we've we've more or less covered it all. The only the <laughs> only playable option currently is waves. So it's like you you basically go there to farm your stuff out. And aside from me just going there and farming out levels to get more pieces, uh, you you pretty much just go there to. Yep. You know, you can, the, you, can uh, your whole, you can have your whole lineup set up here, you know, for, like like Bjorn said, in waves it's a little bit less, like, important, but in general, you know, you can have your X amount of incarnates ready for your different scenarios with your different enemies and whoever you're going to run into and so on. Is there going to be, like, a yeah, solo there's... queue ladder uh, at some point down the road? Like, you just queue up for a game, get matched up versus a random opponent, and then battle it out for ranking? I'm not going to comment on uh, any of <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm changing it out to, to not going to confirm what it is. There, there's, yeah, there's, that's uh, Gordon's gift. He's tweaking it. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, man. I, I'd love to, to give Fair you enough. all the answers. Uh, I'm not going to comment on, on things that might impact what people. Yeah, no, no, I'm not going to talk about it. Um, yeah, that's but the only thing I think you haven't shown right now, which is not really important, is that there's a tutorial uh, in the game as well, which is the start of the uh, campaign thing, uh, called Emergence. Basically, it walks you through how to use all the abilities and stuff like that. So even if all of this looks confusing to you, get a good intro there. And then you can start the campaign levels. There are going to be more of them we're releasing. I think, I, and again, I'm not promising anything, but I think the next release is in a few weeks. Uh, which is going to have more content, uh, more abilities, and stuff like that. Not more abilities, but more like fleshed out uh, everything. Um, and I, the, the plan is essentially to do releases every roughly three weeks or something like that. The uh, the current team is is working on that schedule. No promises, but that's basically the uh, the default that we do. And then no promises on when the final final release is coming out either. Uh, but it's uh, yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of these things are already in place. So it's more about you know getting everything produced and getting everything tweaked. Obviously, you know, figuring out all the bugs that Graham has added for us. Is still up here, is he? No, not here still. No. Yeah, the, yeah, all the bugs that Graham has been uh, making, um, we need to sort those out. Um, and uh, yeah, so so we were on good schedule, good, good schedule to, to reach the goals that we have. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Bjorn and, and Sham, for doing this for us, guys. Appreciate that a ton. Uh, learned a bunch. And Walt. Phenomenal job hosting this man. Thank you, thank uh, you. Yeah, this this was great. I'm I'm excited to hop in Alpha tonight. Um, watch some Blue Bear videos. I guess I have your channel pulled up here now. <laughs> so I'm really yeah, really excited. Start, right? start learning. Awesome man. But yeah, so so glad to have. Uh, thanks for. I just kind of hopped in because I saw that there, that someone messaged it. So I'm glad I'm glad I came and thanks for thanks for hanging out, guys.
Yeah, no, it made for uh, it, it for sure made for a graded edition, having you hear, having you explain, you know, some of the uh, back end things that are a little bit more on the play side rather than Bjorn's dev side. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks everyone for for joining. Yeah, for sure. Thanks a lot, guys. And thanks, yeah, thanks guys. Bye and learn a little bit more. Good luck. Have fun. See you guys. See Thank you guys you. in the comments. Nice to meet you. GG's. Sounds good. Cheers, everybody. Tanker.